you, let's yeah. move up the scrum slightly. We, you brought up on uh, the point on live on Sky at the weekend, the, the potential battle there, Cruz and Atwood in the second yeah. row. How do you see that developing? I guess this weekend again we'll have a little bit of a play on... Two, on again, it's what these warm-up games are for. Atwood, I seem to remember doing an interview with him on the touchline after one of the Autumn Internationals. So he was either man of the match or we'd picked him out in the studios having a heck of a game. Big man. I don't quite see him as a sort of backies boater, but a big man, a, a sort of hard carrier, ruck hitter, old school second row. Launch Bin Laws are these modern day, can play six as well as four and five, really pace. You look at Retallick, um, Sam Whitelock, awesome. These guys, Etzebeth, I mean, Etzebeth got a cover tackling on the weekend against Juan Imhoff, who'd scored a hat trick against South Africa the week before. You think, what is a second row doing there? Unbelievable. Parling's um, your line out specialist, and we'll go. Lancaster's always been a big fan of Parling. So you then get to Cruz, who is more your Law's Launchbury, but not quite in your Law's Launchbury category. Made one error against the All Blacks last autumn. It cost him a try for Richard McCaw up the left-hand side. Jumped out of the line. Um, but he stole some line-out ball at the weekend. Got back defensively. Had one horrific kick out of his own 22 late on. And then, in the desperation to cover it, missed an awful tackle. Dropped a ball close to the line. So he didn't have the perfect game. But he did have a huge role to play in the Johnny May try. Big carry, got up, first receiver, fly half, pulled it back, gave it the extra width, good cross kick, pulled the French defensive line up. Cruz has, although we always have an argument on Sky as to how we actually pronounce it, George, um, is an easier way of putting <laughs> it, has a real rugby brain, he gets it. Atwood is let me hit something. Mm. Now, Different people will offer you different opinions about what they want from a second row. Um, I think if you're going into the World Cup with five back rows and you know your numbers one, two, three, second row are Laws, Launch, Preparling, so you're looking at the fourth slot. I think that's why it potentially plays into George's hands, unless Dave, uh, Dave Atwood, with a double T, I spelt it wrong for so many years. As Dave Atwood with a double T he goes to Paris. If he goes to Paris, smashes a couple of people, a big, smashes a couple of big French lads just after they've sang the Marseillaise and it's all kicking off because it's Le Rose Beef in town. If he has a big game there, then he's back in. I mean, it's, it's fascinating because in reality, a lot of the debates we're having are over players who may not play more than 30 minutes in a World Cup and yet that's what's dominating the airways because you want to be in that 31. It also feels like Atwood Cruz, Burrell, Burgess, Slade, those sorts of dilemmas, it's not necessarily, the final decision might just come down to the balance yeah. and it's actually the balance of the other players. Well, we're assuming them. England are t taking 17-14. Mm -hmm. We're assuming they're taking 17 forwards and 14 backs. Mm -hmm. um, here's a left field one that um, my old man said to me last night, my old man Captain England, uh, and coached England in the 80s when they coached England to beat the All Blacks in 1983. Best coach I've ever had. He goes, why don't you take 16-15 uh, and Burgess is your extra back row cover uh, off the bench. You can load your bench 6-2 split. We have a classic 5-3 split on the bench. So without being technical, most teams go into a match with five forwards on the bench, loose head tight at hooker, one second row, one back row, three backs. Scrum half, fly half, slash inside centre and utility back. Um, but you've got a big game against, you know, we end up, somehow we end up playing South Africa in a quarter final. We've come second in a group, scraped out, or Scotland have pulled off a huge shock, beating South Africa. We've won the group, we find ourselves up against South Africa, and you have someone like a Burgess and you load it 6-2. It's 5-3 really, because he's, he's been called an inside centre. But you need to go on and um, Dwayne Vermeulen's having too big a game. Etzebeth's having too big a game. Duplessis's having too big a game. Someone needs to shut him down. Right, Tom Wood, off you come. We're not sending Haskell on to get turnovers on. Burgess, thinking of Russell Crowe, unleash <laughs> hell. 
unleash hell, hold what, the line. What, what if player, not now, then when? What Here we go. Sam Burgess could be in the, in the World Cup. And also, the, the, the other one, I, the line I want to, comp uh, the line I've been interested about is because of his potential use as a decoy and the fact that he could attract so many people simply by being on the field. He could be the greatest England player that doesn't actually touch a ball. So his decoy runs could create so much mm -hmm. that you'd be coming to come like a John Riggins, number 44 for the Washington Redskins. You do the running play fake, Joe Theismann, everyone converges on John Riggins. The younger generation won't have a clue I'm talking about. Conver I know, clear, converge on John Riggins, one of the great uh, fullbacks of American football for okay. the Redskins in the 80s. He goes wide to Art Monk. We'll see. Right, I'm going to just pull you back to one final question from Twitter. Uh, from at what Katie said. Uh, oh, I've seen, I've seen, yeah, she's quite bullish on Twitter. Is she? I have, yeah. Okay, okay. she did ask a, a number of questions. Yeah. Right? I, I just picked out one. Right. But there were a few. Uh, do you feel Danny Cipriani will miss out? Yes. Yes. I do. Good was brilliant yeah. at fullback. Uh, he's going to go with two fly halves, Ford and Farrell. Where I feel sympathy for Danny is he's worked his socks off, he's got back into the squad. They sent him on with 30 minutes to go against France. 30 minutes would seem like a lifetime. How many times did he touch the ball? Not many. One. Wow. He got a pass off Burgess, French line in front of him. He shipped it onto Watson. He had a couple of rucks. That's it. Just on that point. That was his big 30 minutes. Just on that point, about 30 minutes. Brad Barrett, slight calf injury. Yeah. Apparently. So Burrell starts. Yeah. Massive game for him. If Barrett had been fit, Barrett starts, Burrell gets 30 minutes off the bench, potentially to see. That's it, yeah, that's, and it. that's why. So, I'm Northern. Uh, I, by being Northern, that tends to mean down the years you're a foot soldier. You follow the Southerners. <laughs> um, they sort of tend to be at the back telling you what to do, and Northerners are up front grafting. Uh, so, I've always been someone who's been brought up by two school teachers who gets, who do what I'm told. Um, and so my point here would be, do you, as a listener, rate Lancaster, Farrell, Roundtree, Cat? My answer is yes. Other people might go, no. I think the vast majority of people would go, yes. Therefore, they've created a training plan this summer that gets as close to match day training as possible. Just in the newspaper today, Lancaster's talked about it. If I need to have another 80 minute blowout on Tuesday, Wednesday, I, we can recreate. If lads know they're playing for their places, we can recreate as close to a test match as required. Therefore, they've seen into the whites of their eyes. Do I agree with all of his selections? Have I agreed with all of his selections? No, Six Nations this year or last year, I'd have put Watson straight in. He went with Nolan May. Um, would I have Jamie George over Luke Cohen Dickey? Yes. But there, there comes a time where you can offer the opinion, but we're all wanting England to win, and therefore we have to trust that he's seen enough. If, if Barrett does play, we haven't seen selection yet, and Burrell only gets 30 minutes off the bench and doesn't get a chance, and he picks Burrell over Burgess, even though Burgess plays that well, you have to trust the fact that behind closed doors, Otherwise, we need to start a Lancaster out campaign, no, which doing no one's doing that. No. I mean, he's, he's fantastic for what he's done. So that's, that's the view. We, my, my view last week was Barrett, Joseph, Burrell, Slade, pre-France game. We have the luxury, without our necks on the block, to go, no, 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 suddenly he's had to play a quite good game, let's change it there. Have I swung completely away from that and now thinking Barrett, Joseph, Burgess, Slade, I'm closer to that than I was last week, but Luther has to have the opportunity this weekend 